Hello, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name's Katie, I'm a full-time artist. And last month I finished my daily art challenge and I used to do bi-weekly videos where I summed up what I did, did a little recap and shared my sketchbooks with you. But obviously now that's over, I'm sharing my sketchbooks less here. I'm doing more process videos, but I do miss doing a recap. So I thought I would start this monthly series where I film little bits for my month and make it into a monthly vlog. This month is slightly different though, we're not starting off on the right foot because I didn't really film much and I've been going through a little bit of art block which I'll talk a little bit more about later. So this is mostly going to be me chatting to the camera but I did film some footage when I went to Winchester and filmed a mini vlog there so I'll be adding that onto the video. So there's a few little things but not as much as I'd like. So mostly I'm just going to be sharing my sketchbooks with you which are all here and this is the work that I've created in September. So I'm going to start from the beginning I did this piece the day after I finished the daily art challenge and I was really happy to have ended the challenge, like it was a really great year for me, I really grew creatively and found my style and created a lot of work which was what my hope was. But I was pleased it was over because obviously it was a really big undertaking and I really felt like I needed that break and that rest. But I still hope to create and like I did think having that habit for a year would have made it easier for me to carry that on. But what I found is that that hasn't really been the case. But it started off well and the day after I watched back a Patreon drawing session with Emma Carlyle and I filled this spread in my sketchbook which just has this like tree house over here and this big barn. So this was part of a bigger session so there was another half which I did a separate day but on this one I really was just focusing on enjoying creating all these marks, there's a lot of texture here and I'm really pleased with this page, it feels like the right amount of loose and messy versus being quite finished. A lot of the times I struggle with knowing when something's finished whilst trying to keep my style loose. But I think I managed it here and I really like the layout as well. And the other part of that drawing session were just drawing some tree climbers, so I did these in my sketchbook and these were like the warm-ups, this one was 10 minutes and this one was 15 minutes and I was really happy with how they turned out as well. I don't often draw people at all so this was a nice way to lean into it because it is definitely something I want to practice. I also have a few random pages in my sketchbook that I just filled um, because I was still trying to keep up the daily art but not necessarily posting it so I just had a spare five minutes so I filled this and then uh, I think this was another day and I filled it with these houses which are reference from Burned and Hiller Besher and I really liked the architecture there and this is something I, I saw ages and ages ago and kept up as a tab on my browser and I kept meaning to draw them so I finally filled them in. And then I created this piece which became the Patreon print for September. This is of the Mostar Bridge. And I was really pleased with this one, it felt very easy for me, it's quite loose, like there's not a huge amount of details and I was really quite loose with my marks and my paintbrush and so the textures are quite soft and I was pleased with how this river turned out. So I was happy with this one and really pleased that my patrons chose it for the print for this month. So I definitely started off well. Every month I go live for my patrons, whether that's a Zoom drawing session where we all draw together or I do it on YouTube and it's just me on the live. And for this one it was just me and I filled my sketchbook with these panels and I was really happy with how they turned out. I really love the contrast of the red and like the warmth of the yellow and the green and then the blue sky. So this was various different references that I'd found and then pieced together into one spread. I did my little colour palette there which I really like and I think this is just a really nice vibrant spread and it was really nice to create on a live stream. Then this next piece I actually did plein air so I'd gone sketching and I'll be able to put up a few little Instagram stories that I took whilst creating these. I'd just gone to drop off my final exhibition artwork which again I'll talk about in a moment. I sat on a wall nearby in a little park and just drew these. So they really didn't take very long, I think I was there for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I had taken my sketchbook and a pencil case filled with just a few colours. So obviously the buildings aren't actually pink, but I really wanted to use my Ecoline brush pen to fill in that space really quickly. And I really love how these turned out, I was really pleased with them, especially because they didn't take me very long. And it felt really nice to do some plein air work. 
So just a bit about the exhibition. Again, I'll put something on screen so you can see a little peek at what I painted. This is part of a group exhibition that was for Southampton artists and there were 11 of us that got chosen. And the exhibition is still on, so you can see it at Goss House Tower in Southampton. It's on until the 2nd of October and I'll leave a link down below to their website so you can see opening times and everything. But there's a real mix of really interesting work that are very different from each other. So I will pop that down below if you want to have a look. My work was focused on my life living on the edge of the New Forest, so a lot of the paintings I did were views from around where I grew up and all the memories that were linked to them. So I picked out some core memories and then painted the place. And I was definitely a bit less realistic with my paintings. I tried something new, they're a little bit more abstract than usual, a lot of vibrancy and I really enjoyed painting at this bigger scale. I really wanted to push myself which is why I did the bigger paintings and there was a set of five and then I also made an art book talking more about the work and why I picked the views that I did. I did film a video over on Patreon which talks about the work in more detail and really shares up close some of the paintings as well as talking through the whole process from like the beginning of the exhibition until the end and really talked more about the process over there. But it's definitely been an amazing experience and like I said it does run until October 2nd and then I'll be getting the paintings back and then I've got to work out what I'm going to do with them. The next piece I wanted to share is in my low pressure sketchbook. There's a lot of pieces in here that I haven't shown and only share with my patrons but this one was another video for my patrons, which was all about how to draw fast. And that was the exclusive video for August. And I did this one in five minutes and this one in 10 minutes. You all know that I'm a big advocate for timers in my work. And so I shared some of my tips about how to draw scenes, especially complicated ones like this in that video. In August, I went to visit my brother and sister-in-law and they have phantom chickens. So I took lots of photos because I didn't have my sketchbook with me and I just knew I wanted to fill a spread with them. So that's what I did towards the end of August. And I've done a few spreads in here like this with like pigeons and magpies. And I thought that the bantam chickens would work really nicely in this style because they have so many lovely patterns and they have a really lovely temperament and they're just full of character. And I feel like it does come through on this spread. This was done with gouache first, no sketching, just finding the shapes of my paintbrush and adding colours as I went. And then adding all the details on top with coloured pencils and near colours. So this was just a really fun spread to do and I really enjoy filling my sketchbook spreads like this. So the next piece I want to share is this really big piece that I did in my A4 sketchbook. And again, this was following a Patreon session with Emma Carlyle. I really have found that to be a good resource for me when I'm a bit stuck for what to draw, especially because I don't have the accountability of the daily art challenge of going on some of the Patreons that I'm part of and drawing from there, drawing sessions. And so this one was sort of underground animal uh, burrows and things. And so I focused on this one piece here during the session and I was really pleased with it. And I love the colours, I really love the pink with the screen here and the trees. I definitely messed up on like the scale of the animals. The badgers are very small or the rabbits are very big. But there was something that wasn't quite right. I'm really trying to focus on texture at the moment and really experiment a bit more with that. And it just felt like it wasn't very clear that this is actually underground. So what I did was I tried it again um, after some feedback on Instagram and really tried to change the contrast. So this is the exact same view and I used the bigger piece to reference this one, uh, except this is in my A5 sketchbook. And I do think you can tell that this is underground now with the contrast difference. But obviously I spent a lot less time on this, so it's not as finished or as nice. But it was still really helpful for me to see the difference there. It was more just to try out different colours, so I wasn't trying to make a perfect piece. But it was really interesting for me to try it again, but different. So I kept the burrows lighter and the soil darker, whereas the other one was the other way around. I added some little collage here because I messed up the drawings of the animals first. But like I said, this was more just a test of seeing what this would look like in a different way. And that's something that I didn't do on my daily art challenge. I would draw one thing and then I'd move on to another painting or something completely different, a different topic or a different medium the next day. 
So I really want to try and refine my art and I feel like I can do this now that I've got a bit more time. So one thing I want to share about finishing the daily art challenge is actually how much I've struggled and although it started off better I've definitely found September a challenge in that sense. I feel like not having that accountability of having to draw every day I've really not prioritised it so I've been working on a lot of client work this month and other things in the background and it's meant that I'm not creating for me. So if it's not on my to-do list or if it is on my to-do list and I've got other things to do it will always get bumped to the bottom. So I've really not been as creative as I wanted to after the daily art challenge had ended. Again I talked about that more in a recent Patreon video but I do feel like my style and like this art block is more of just a transition period. After a year of creating so intensely I feel like I need this rest period to work out where I'm going next and so I am seeing it as a transition period for my style where I work out what it is that I want and what it is that I like about my style and what I want to change to then be able to move forward and create more again. I do feel like style isn't the end result, it's a constantly evolving thing as an artist and I don't think that once you've got to a style that you like that you should just stop there and I really feel like I'm at that point now where although I got to a point where I was happy with it, I want to push it even further. And for me, I'm really interested in textures and softening my work and also spending a bit more time on it. I've been doing a lot of time pieces and like kind of rushing it and that helped me find the looser style. But now I want to really push that forward a bit more and see if I can combine the looseness with more time and create more finished pieces that could work in like a children's book or in some other capacity than just in my sketchbook. So I'm seeing this transition as a good thing. Most of September was a bit wobbly for me. I did find it really difficult not having the daily art challenge and not creating considering I am an artist. So I've been battling with a lot of guilt in that sense and reframing it in my mind is making me a bit more excited and I want to experiment more and hopefully that will come in the next few months. So this video is getting longer than I realised, so I'm going to try and whiz through the rest. This was a drawing challenge again from a Patreon session, this time with Sarah Dyer. This one was 25 minutes, but the warm-up sketches I did again in my low-pressure sketchbook, and they look like this. So I spent 3 minutes on this one, uh, 5 minutes on this one, and then 10 minutes on this larger one. And these weren't the suggested timings, but I tend to not spend like two hours watching the replays and I just sort of dip in and out and take the pieces that interest me or do it quicker than the timings that are suggested. But this was the end one that I finished on which was 25 minutes and I'm really pleased with this one. Obviously the ratio and the proportion of the boat isn't perfect but I really enjoyed painting this one. There's a lot of neo colour here on top of gouache and I just really love the contrast on that red boat. Next I went on Map Crunch, which is one of my favourites for finding references, and drew this street view in America. This was just a random pin drop over America and I stumbled upon this street view and I was really pleased with it because this is the kind of views that really interest me. I obviously do draw some pretty views but I really like pushing myself with things like this where it really does have lots of little things to draw, so obviously we've got lamp posts, there's a fire hydrant, road signs and cars and then obviously the houses which I really enjoy and I really had fun creating this one and it felt nice to not think about anything and just draw the view in front of me and not really worry about the end result so even though I don't love how it looks I know that I enjoyed creating it. I also created this piece which I don't have anymore, this has been given to a patron as part of a top tier reward but this was one where I was really experimenting again with texture and using different techniques. This was where I was starting to realise that I want to change my style up a bit and experiment more and this was like the catalyst for that. And I was really happy with how it turned out even though it does feel very different for me. When I shared it on Instagram I talked a bit about that and it was really encouraging to hear that people could still tell it was mine but obviously with different techniques and a different topic. So this is kind of where I want to go from here, I want to experiment more and try new things, new blending techniques, using paint in a different way, as well as instead of just spending 10 minutes on one thing, 
of like coming back to it and working more on top of it. This was a piece I didn't share on Instagram but again you can see I'm really experimenting with textures here. This was using soft pastel which is a medium I don't often use but I was trying to create the softer textures here so although I didn't share this one it was still a really good experiment. I did share this one on Instagram, these were some quick 20 minute fish and you'll have seen the process for this one on last week's video. I also created these two landscape scenes. This was again where I was just trying to be playful because I've been doing so much overthinking. I just wanted to create in my sketchbook and I was really happy with these. So I did this one which took about 40 minutes and then this one which took 10 so I spent a lot less time on it. But I really just enjoyed putting the paint on the page and obviously this one has a lot more work into it because I had more time and it has more contrast but I still really like the quicker one. It was just really nice to create in my sketchbook and try and switch off the part of my brain that was overthinking so much. I also did a choose your own adventure style zoom session with my patrons this month and did some quick warm-up drawings where I supplied lots of different reference images and then we drew the ones that we wanted and that was really fun. I had a lovely time drawing with them and we do that every other month. So these are the pieces that I created during that session which was called Adventure in the Serengeti and it always goes so fast and I'm always so inspired by the work that they create and share at the end that it makes me want to go back and retry it so that's definitely something I want to do as well. Finally I wanted to share this piece which I have done most recently. This is in my little A5 sketchbook and I did this plein air when we went on a day trip to Winchester earlier this week. I really do want to do more plein air drawings because the weather's going to turn now, it's coming into autumn and so whilst the sun is shining I do want to make sure I make the most of it. And I really enjoyed creating this one. As you know I really enjoy working in panels and this one felt quite easy for me. I filled in the block colours first and then worked on top with the coloured pencils and I was really happy with the end result. So this was the day that I filmed a vlog, so I'm going to insert that footage to round off this whole video. But we went art supply shopping, so there is a couple of shops that I visited and then I'll share my haul with you and a little swatch page showing what I bought. So you might recognise this walk in, this used to be my commute and I filmed this for a vlog when I was working full time as a designer but for this day we just went in and explored the high street a little bit. We went to one of our favourite places which is called Chococo and I had this incredible deluxe hot chocolate. We also went into Pullinger's which is at the top of Kloss and Hamblin. This was quite a small little concession so it's just in the corner of the top floor but there was a lot there and I was quite impressed by the range of paints and they also had a lot of Royal Talent sketchbooks which is really handy to know because those are my favourites. Then we went to Winchester Framing which is a really lovely independent shop that obviously does picture framing but has a lot of art supplies and this is where I bought all the art materials for my haul today. I didn't buy many things because I was mostly replacing pencils that had turned to stubs so those are my favourites because I've been using them so much and I thought it would be helpful to swatch those for you. It was a really lovely cosy store but it was quite cramped in there. One of those things where you have to be careful with your bags because you might knock something off. But it had a lovely vibe and the staff was really nice and it felt really good to actually visit an art supply store in person because usually I just buy them online. So after we finished up at the art supply shops we went to get some pastries from the Winchester Bakery and then headed to the grounds in front of the cathedral so I could do some plein air sketching. As you saw, I had taken my yellow A5 Royal Talent sketchbook and a pouch of art supplies already. So I had a couple of Tombos in there as well as the Luminance pencils which I was replacing. And I also used the brown one which I'd bought for some of the details in this spread. It was a really lovely sunny day. It was around lunchtime at this point so the grounds were filling up with quite a lot of people having their lunch. But it was really nice to sit in the sunshine and do some sketching like this. It's been a while since I've done any drawing outside so it was really nice to feel my creative mojo back again and just draw what was on front of me. We weren't here for that long because when I'm doing plein air sketching I'm always aware of the time. But I really enjoyed taking the time to do this 
and I'm really glad I could fill the full sketchbook spread. I started with this one on the left, which was a full panel just of the main view of the cathedral that we were in front of. And then I split the right hand page into smaller panels, so one at the top and two along the bottom. And you'll see I just filled those with little views that were around us. This was all done with Tombows, coloured pencils and then a tiny bit of Neo Colour for the last one but I'll leave you with some music and you can enjoy watching this come together before I come back and show you the haul for everything that I bought. So these are the pieces that I bought in Winchester Framing and like I said most of these are replacements because they turned into stubs, some of the pencils are like this now and they're getting really hard to use. So I wanted to replace those and I also bought two new colours which I wanted to buy because I want to slowly build up my luminance collection but I'm doing it slowly because they are so expensive. So these are the four that I bought to replace the colours that I use all the time. This is a really lovely dark green. This is dark thalocenin green, which is shade number 719. That's really nice for darker trees and adding in some shading into nature. And it's really nice paired with this olive yellow 015. And I really enjoy using this one for like lawns and fields. And this is just a really nice one to pair with that darker green. This light cobalt 661 is one of my favorite shades of blue. I really love using this for sky and I use it all the time which is why it's the smallest pencil I have now so I definitely wanted to replace that one. And then this last one is brown ochre 10% which is shade number 832 and again I love using this one for neutrals, it works really nicely for paths and as a base layer. So although you wouldn't think much about this one I use it all the time because it's such a lovely warm neutral. The two new shades I got was this dark brown which is Castle Earth 046 and also this light malachite green which is 181 and I want to use the dark brown one for like tree trunks and adding branches and then the malachite green for adding all my details that I like to add on the sea so whenever I draw like water I enjoy doing patterns on top with the waves and I think this one will be good for that. You obviously know I love Neo colours, so I had to replace the two that have broken down into tiny little nubs and are really small now that I almost can't use them, and that is the light olive and the olive. So they work really nicely together, and I use these all the time because I do so many landscapes and nature pieces. I also bought this sketchbook in the art shop, which is from a brand I hadn't heard of before called Indigo Artway, but it was a really reasonable price and so I wanted to try it out because it is an accordion sketchbook. It folds out like this, so it is portrait and there's a lot in here so I was really impressed with that. The paper is lovely quality. You can see at the bottom like it's got a really raw edge. So it is very textured paper and it's definitely going to be different for me to work on because I'm used to smooth. 
but I'm excited to paint some landscapes in here and really experiment again with the blending techniques and I think the paper will really help with that. So this definitely turned into a longer video than I thought it would but I hope you enjoyed it. It's been really nice to recap my art because it does help me seeing it like this and realise I did create a little bit more than I realised. Obviously feeling a bit stunted and a bit blocked with creativity it's nice to look back and realise actually I created more than I thought and I'm also really pleased with some of the pieces. So I think our brains can really emphasise that we're not creating and videos like this really helped me realise that I am. So I'm going to continue doing this and I'd love to hear if you think it's a good idea, if you enjoyed this video. So the lighting was changing and the sun is really coming in now so I've had to close the blind but I think that's high sign for me to sign off after such a long video. I really hope you enjoyed it though and I would love to hear your feedback down below. I hope you have a lovely week and I will see you next week with a new video. See you later!